What is up, everybody? I'm back. It's um, Snap Count Monday. Um, something I'm going to try to do every Monday is go through and just look at the snap count for the Seahawks from the previous game. See if we can learn anything from it. Um, it's tough during a game to get a sense of who's out there a lot of times. You know, I, I think I can speak for myself and many others when we watch the game. Our focus is solely on the result of the play of the game, not on who was necessarily out there. Obviously, we see, you know, if there's a sack who was out there, but sometimes you go back there and you're like, wow, he's only out there 10 snaps, or, you know, or wow, that guy got 45 snaps. So we're going to go through, just break down the snaps for the offense and the defense. If there's nothing that jumps out to us, nothing jumps out to us. If something does, it does. So this is for the Seahawks and the Raiders on um, uh, Sunday. This is during the Seahawks, uh, really disappointing 40 to 34 loss to Las Vegas. I have a new phone, um, so hopefully this is recording okay and it sounds good. Should be a little better picture quality, I'm hoping. And then starting Thursday into next week, I should have a better setup as well. So I'll have kind of a, a room. They'll have some stuff in the background that'll make it uh, a little bit nicer for my videos as well. So the quality should be improving here. Um, let's start with the offense. Um, always easier to start on offense. Um, Actually, no, it doesn't matter, I guess. But there were 65 plays for the offense. Players have played every play were Abe Lucas, Charles Cross, Damian Lewis, Geno Smith, and Austin Blythe. Um, no surprises there. Obviously, Gabe Jackson and Phil Haynes are splitting the snaps. Um, Abe Lucas was questionable coming in. Um, I guess he was under the weather. Probably played his worst game. I think his PFF grade was in the 50s. So, honestly, like, not terrible, but very... Um, average I guess and going up against Max Crosby and possibly being sick as well couldn't could have played a factor and honestly it's gonna happen he's a rookie Max Crosby is a fantastic pass rusher it's gonna happen um I don't think Austin Blythe played very well at all I, I can't say any of the interior linemen played very well I'll throw Damian Lewis in there uh, I'll put a lot of the onus on Kenneth Walker uh, for not running the ball well but some of that goes on the offensive line too um, and obviously Gino played every snap I think he's played every snap this season DK Metcalf played 59 snaps, Tyler Lockett 57. Um, as far as the tight ends, Will Disley was no surprise there. Sometimes those guys come off and, you know, one wide receiver sets and stuff like that. So pretty common. For the tight ends, Will Disley was 48 snaps. Noah Fant was 40. Colby Parkinson was 16. That kind of seems to be the norm. Um, I imagine Disley plays more snaps than Noah Fant, better uh, run blocker. So he's going to get more looks there and be in on more of the running downs as well. Um, in terms of the guards between Jackson and Phil Haynes, Gabe Jackson played 39 snaps, Phil Haynes 26. Um, I'm fine with the splitting of the carry of the carries, the snaps there, but I do wonder at some point if you just go with Phil Haynes, although Haynes had a really bad game too. So I don't know, you know, he, he really struggled. Um, I think he was the lowest graded offensive guy by PFF. PFF isn't the end-all be-all, so when I say this, it's not saying that, like, well, PFF said it, therefore it's guaranteed. Use your eyes, use what you think is best as well, but it just gives kind of a barometer for maybe where they played. Um, Kenneth Walker was 46 snaps, Travis Homer 13, DJ Dallas 9. Um, I I've talked about it nauseum that I, I wish the team would have added another running back. Uh, Homer did play pretty well. He had that second and 23 conversion where he got free behind the linebackers. Um, he had the touchdown catch. And if you go back and watch the third and five um, on the Seahawks' last drive um, in overtime before Josh Jacobs had the big run, he was open in the flat. Um, unfortunately, Abe Lucas couldn't, couldn't contain Max Crosby, and Noah Fant was supposed to chip on that play, um, and it did not go well. If, that, if they could have just blocked Crosby for a half second, Travis Homer makes the catch, and the Seahawks are in field goal range, or at least in a shot for a field goal. Um, other receivers, Marquise Goodwin played 29 snaps. He's been a really nice third weapon um, as a wide receiver. They've kind of been missing that through the past few years. Thought he had a decent game. Um, he had some good catches. Um, Laquan, Laquan Treadwell played seven snaps. He just came up off the practice squad with um, D. Eskridge going on IR. And then Derek Young played a snap um, as well. So nothing really to report. It doesn't look like Nick Ballore got a snap. On offense, let's go to defense. Um, they were on the field for 77 plays. Too much. Too many plays. And part of that's their own undoing. Um, 
Tariq Woolen, Jordan Brooks, Quandre Diggs played all 77. Thought Woolen was fine. Uh, the announcer said that Woolen was maybe at fault on that flea flicker touchdown. There were so many touchdowns in the game, I forget which ones happened. But there was a flea flicker to Mac Hollins in the second quarter, maybe the first. Uh, that first quarter took so long. Um, I think it was in the second quarter. Um, and Adam Archuleta, who was calling the game along with Greg Gumbel, said that that was on Woolen. I don't know. Um, Woolen and Diggs kind of both went to Devontae Adams. Wow, I'm all for putting as many guys on Devontae Adams as you want. You can't just leave nobody on Matt Collins. Might have been on Tariq Woolen, might not have been. Uh, Jordan Brooks, 16 tackles. I've talked about how tackles are not always the best stat. Um, some of them can be clean up tackles, and someone's got to get those tackles. So it's not a bad stat, but it can be misleading. I thought Brooks was okay. Um, he got um, the fullback on the Jacobs walk-off touchdown run, blew up Jordan Brooks pretty good on that play. Nobody did their job in that play. I don't know if the defense was just gassed or what, but uh, every single Seahawks defender got pushed back on that play. Ryan Neal played 76 snaps. Um, he came off on that, I think, the... the the play before, the, the third down when the Seahawks stuffed Josh Jacobs on the first overtime drive, uh, he came out with an injury. I think Pete Carroll said it was a shoulder injury, so we'll see what that means. That would be a really big blow because Ryan Neal's played really well. Um, I don't think it gets talked about enough. This team really does miss Jamal Adams. I know he's kind of become a meme in some ways, unfortunately, for fans, um, but they do miss him. I'm not saying that that trade was something they should have done. I think looking back, they shouldn't have made that trade. But Jamal Adams is still a quality player, and they are missing him. I'm sorry. Like, you can be upset. You can say, I'm sucks, whatever. I don't care. He is a good player. Um, and they're missing. Ryan Neal's filled in admirably, but you'd have Neal on the field as well. So they, they really are missing Jamal Adams um, in there. Michael Jackson played 74 snaps. Trey Brown only played three. I think that changes next week. I don't know if it's going to be a 50-50 split, but I'd really like to see them um, work in Trey Brown a little bit more at corner. I think Jackson, last couple weeks, plays tailed off a little bit. He's been fine, but some I, I would have no problem with Trey Brown taking over for him. Um, Cody Barton played 56 snaps. So did Achenna Nwosu. Um, Bruce Irvin, 53, and Kobe Bryant, 53. Um, I thought Kobe Bryant had a really rough game. I feel like Kobe Bryant's actually had a really rough few weeks here. Um, he's made some plays. He's clearly someone that can force turnovers. So, um, he, he is a playmaker. Reminds me a little bit, maybe not the best comparison, but if you remember Josh Wilson, the, uh, corner for the Seahawks, played in the end of the Holmgren era and the Mora era and was traded, um, when Pete Carroll arrived, Brian's a bigger body than Wilson, definitely. But Wilson would get beat, but also did make some plays and made some turnovers. Um, you know, he was one of the few guys Wilson was in that secondary back then that could create turnovers. He wasn't a great corner, but he did have some ball skills. Kobe Bryant clearly has an ability to punch the ball. He would have had another force fumble on the Josh Jacobs run in the fourth quarter that was deemed a forward progress. That was, again, Kobe Bryant forcing the ball out. But he has been beaten coverage a few times. Listen, like, is Justin Coleman a better cover nickel at this point? Maybe. I don't know. But you have to keep rolling with Kobe Bryant. you got to let the youngsters take their lumps right now. Kobe Bryant has potential to be a playmaker. I don't know about him long-term as a nickel. Uh, he's been the one rookie that I'm not sure about. Like, I like his ball hawking ability, or I should say his ability to cause turnovers. That's really important, but he has been beat a few times. He's all, he's a rookie. I'm not going to jump the gun there. Um, but if Seattle were like desperate, desperate to win, I do wonder if you'd see Justin Coleman get some more reps out there just to see. Um, but I, they're not, they need to roll with Kobe Bryant and see what they have. That's more important, um, than anything else right now. Um, Talk about Bruce Irvin. He's getting the majority of snaps over Daryl Taylor. Only 18 snaps for Daryl Taylor. Maybe 19. I don't know if we count the play where he ran on the field during the Quandre Diggs interception. Um, that was very bizarre. My thought is, I, I think that Taylor thought the play um, was over um, and they were going to go celebrate. And they realized, oh, darn, the game's, the play's still going on. I guess I'll block somebody. Um, that was really bizarre, but yeah, Daryl Taylor definitely has not been getting a lot of playing time. 
LJ Collier played 17 snaps. He was invisible. Most of these guys were pretty invisible, honestly. Josh Jones played 10 snaps. Um, Shelby Harris played 45. I think he was one of the few guys on the D-line that played okay. I thought him and Al Woods and even Puna Ford were okay. Don't think they were amazing. Woods played 35 snaps. Puna Ford played 33. Boya Mafe, 27. Brian Monet, 21. Um, Quentin Jefferson played 39. I have not seen Quentin Jefferson. Um, I know, listen, he's a pass rush guy, but where is it? I have not seen it. He's been kind of a disappointment. Um, I'd like to see him getting in there a little bit more and um, making some plays and making some sacks. Um, like I said, I thought Al Woods played okay. thought he made some nice run stuffs um, when they did make them. But yeah, I mean, that's that's the snap count. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anybody here. Um, interesting that Bruce Irvin's getting the majority of the pass rushing reps over Daryl Taylor. That's probably the one thing. I, I At this point, I think I'd give them to Daryl Taylor. I like Bruce Irvin. Um, and listen, you got to earn your snaps on the field. Daryl Taylor's just not done it this year. Um, he's made a couple plays, but for the most part, it's been pretty invisible. Um, Bruce Irvin's been involved, at least I think a little bit more. He doesn't have a lot of the sacks, but he's been in there, although I did not see him much on Sunday. Um, Puna Ford was the only guy that got a sack. He's had a nice pass rush season. Um, I think Puna's had a nice year. Um, but yeah, other than that, not much else to dive into. Um, I'll, I do want to say real quick, I'll give, I'll make this kind of a snap count plus preview week for next week. Um, not a preview, but, um, Aaron Donald is being looked at for a potential, potential high ankle sprain, um, according to Sean McVay, uh, from the Rams. Uh, by the way, those snap counts were courtesy of Bob Condota. Um, just, just so credits do, um, I do not track snap counts. Um, <laughs> so just, just so that's out there, but, um. Yeah, McVay said that Donald may have a high ankle sprain. I, I would imagine he'd miss the game. High ankle sprains can be, I mean, I've seen guys end seasons on high ankle sprains, and the Rams are pretty much out of it at this point. I think they're three and eight or three and nine. I, I don't. I said this on Twitter. I don't like to get into like you have to win this game a lot because even in the NFL, you are dealing with teams at the highest of levels. Like these are the best players in the world, but if you're playing a Rams team that likely won't have Matthew Stafford. Um, he, he's been in concussion protocol twice. I think he has a shoulder injury. Um, they were, they're saying last week, not sure he's going to play again this year. So I can't imagine he's back all of a sudden. Cooper Cup is out. They lost to Allen Robinson and now possibly no Aaron Donald. Honestly, and, and listen, I'm not trying to be critical. And so if Rams fans are watching this, I don't mean this to be harsh, but like if you were to make a power rankings right now, like the Rams currently with what they're running out there is might, might be with the Texans, like in terms of just worse, worst overall teams, like they're bad. And then add on, like that's with Aaron Donald. They're probably down in the 25 to 28 range. You take out Aaron Donald, they might be 31, honestly. Like, and this isn't a, you know, oh, jinx in it. Like the Seahawks need to win on Sunday. No excuses. Um, I'm willing to let the Raiders game slide. I think the Raiders are better than their record. I'm willing to let the Tampa Bay game slide. Um, I still have a ton of respect for Tom Brady, and I think that's a better coaching staff than people let on. I even think the Raiders coaching staff, to an extent, I think Josh McDaniels is a good play caller. I don't think he's a very good head coach, but I think he is a smart offensive guy. Um, and the Raiders have been in games. They probably should have won at Kansas City um, this year and countless others. The Titans, um, the Chargers... Um, and the, you know, whatever. they've been in a lot of close games and lost all of them. They're not terrible. This Rams team, as it currently is, is not good. This would be the game that if they lose to the Rams next Sunday, you will start to see me get a little critical of what's going on. I, not that I have been critical, but I'll start to get into like, maybe it is time to start talking about is losing better for the draft position here. Maybe it is now at a point where if they can somehow get two top 10 picks, that's more beneficial. Um, I'm going to do a video. Well, we'll see. That's if they lose. Let's, let's not get into that yet. We'll see how they lose, how that happens. I, how they lose. Like We'll see. We'll just see what happens in the Rams game. But the Seahawks should win that game, and they need to win that game. That is a banged-up Rams team that is depleted and almost essentially 100% out of contention. Seattle has to take care of business, and they should have a pretty pro Seahawks crowd there as well in Los Angeles. Um, I'm going to do a video tomorrow or Wednesday 
we have three teams right now essentially fighting for two playoff spots. Washington, New York, Seattle. Atlanta's still involved in the South, but they're 5-7. and seven. Dallas, I think, is almost... You can guarantee Dallas is playing so well. I'd be shocked if they're not the other wild card team. They'd have to have an epic collapse. And everybody else is so far back. I'm doing a little breakdown of those three teams' schedules, where I think they go, what I think happens, and how those final two playoff spots shake up. So look for that Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Again, most of my views are coming from people that aren't subscribed. Um, thank you to everybody that has subscribed. So if you can, please hit the sub button. I, th I hope you like the content um, and feel that I do bring some knowledge and some good insight to the table without massive overreactions and screaming. You're just getting honest football talk here. So said, so please like, follow, whatever, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys later this week. Peace.